Thymine. And on the other side, RNA has the presence of hydroxyl group at the second position of the ribose sugar, whereas the DNA lacks the hydroxyl group of the second position of the ribose sugar.
Where is So welcome class, very good evening. Is my voice clear to you? And can you see my screen in better resolution today? All is good at your side. Please confirm, then we will start our class uh, within next uh, four, four or three minutes. From the last time what we did, we did this DNA isolation. Okay, good. So we just discussed last time about your DNA and RNA transcription translation in brief and uh, now I will, no, no, not transcription we have discussed I guess, yeah, mainly the mRNA and the things, some videos I have discussed with you because there are uh, many classes going on at the moment. So I'm not aware what I have taught you, what I have not taught you. Let me see, let me see. Okay, we have seen the basic video about transcription and translation also on that day. That that I want to confirm actually. That's good. We have discussed about purines and pyrimidines. So, 
okay nice so let's continue with the protein uh, Ritika if it is not clear make your resolution to 720p uh, you can go to the setting option and there is option of making it to 720p there you can change it yeah so let's start the session I think most of the students have joined uh, we can start now maybe just at 1910 we start maybe I think uh, we didn't watch some introductory videos also about cell uh, size, how the cell size is, what is DNA, what is protein, small, they are small animations, what is, uh, how same gene is, it's different things. Did I share these with you? Because they are quite important in order to understand, yeah, this evolution thing we have discussed. Yeah, we didn't discuss. So we have discussed in details about review articles so far. Because we had a long gap, it's very hard to know what we have done. So we have done mainly the basics and we have watched the transcription translation videos. And uh, I have shared with you, this is good thing, we can check what we have done. I shared with the Golden Bible of uh, MBBT. Go read that, it's pretty good. Uh, all techniques that I'm teaching you here is in, in, in it. Okay, fine. So, so first we check that uh, the difference between uh, your cell size and shape. How the cell size of different things or different organisms is, is so drastically different and still they are existing in our body even though having different sizes. So here we can see, if you can uh, see my screen. Cell size and scale. So this is a coffee bean 12 by 8 millimeter. This is on the scale of 1 millimeter here, what we are seeing things. And this is a times regular point, 12 point and this is a grain rice. 8 by 2.5 millimeter. So this is the sesame seed which is 3 by 2 millimeter and the grain of salt is 0 0.5 millimeter and amoeba is 500 micrometer. This is the bacteria now from millimeter we are going into the micrometers and the paramecium 210 2 by 60 human egg around 130 photoreceptors at 2.5 to 100, skin cells 30, red blood cells 8, chromosome 7, bakery is 3 by 4, E. coli 3 by 0 0.6, mitochondria is 4 by 0 0.8, lysosome as 1, Measles, so this was all bacteria in micrometers. Now we are going into the nano part, nanoparticles that is your measles virus around 220 nanometers. 
and your viruses, various viruses, 130, uh, HIV, influenza, your coated vesicles around 90 nanometer, hepatitis virus 45 nanometer, rhinovirus around 30 nanometer, and then comes your ribosomes around 30 nanometer, hemoglobin as 6.5 nanometer, your tRNA is around 7 nanometer, your antibodies are made up of 12 nanometers, then the phospholipids uh, around 0.9 to 3.4, glucose then after the nanometers comes picometer that is glucose around 900 picometers, adenine around 1300 to 760 picometers and methanin uh, you can see around 11,000 to 700 picometers that is one of your amino acids. So at the end water molecule 275 pico and the carbon atom uh, which is the smallest here 340 picometers. So that's how uh, from the picometer to your millimeter of your grain rise um, the distance that travels uh, from that. So I just want to show you an analogy a perspective that what we are seeing from our naked eyes how small they are what is their real values is and and this world is what we are thinking is not but something else so in that sense um, no one has found so far that the carbon carbon atom is around 340 picometer it's the smallest one and our what we are eating the rice grain is in the millimeter size so all these things um, I have been identified till now and in this figure uh, in this in this uh, cell size and scale uh, this diagram in this animation we can easily recognize your various uh, cellular organelles uh, various viruses various bacterias various uh, your cells in the human body your prokaryotes and your eatable items salt grain of rice and we can do a very nice comparison here 340 picometer to your time strobel regular 12 point this is what we write in our uh, in, you will write in your review articles times regular 12 point distance between each space should be one <laughs> one millimeter yeah like so so that's uh, quite um sarcastic we can say uh, comparison but I, I i really like it uh, i should have started my lectures with this but i forgot on that day anyhow i have incorporated this in today's lecture so there are some more videos i want to uh, incorporate it into this today what are dna and genes so let's watch that's a summary of your dna genes The instructions for building all living things, whether a fish, a bacterium, a tree, an insect, or a person, are found in a molecule called DNA. DNA is made up of four tiny building blocks. Each building block has a backbone and a chemical base that is represented by the letter A, C, G, or T. DNA molecules have two strands, that are joined together through complementary base pair. A pairs with T, and C pairs with G. These building blocks function together in larger units called genes. Each gene is a set of instructions for building a specific protein. A complete set of genes is called a genome. A genome is a set of instructions for building an entire organism. Every person's genome has the same genes arranged in the same order. But small differences in the sequence of the bases in our genes make each person unique. That's how we are different from each other because of these small DNA base pairs. Food. And now next is about protein. Proteins carry out most of the body's functions, and they make up the bulk of its structure, from hair and fingernails to bone and muscle. In fact, 
Nearly everything in our bodies is made from or by proteins. The instructions for building proteins are found in segments of DNA called genes. Proteins are made of long chains of building blocks called amino acids. There are 20 amino acids in all. Put together in different combinations, amino acids form proteins with a broad variety of shapes. This diversity of form gives proteins their many functions. The proteins a cell makes determine what it can do. Our cells are constantly at work, producing the thousands of different proteins that keep our bodies functioning. Tai Chi, the Chinese meditation. Means now I think the last one I will not make you bored from these things. Yeah, same gene, different organism. Just want to explain you that the jellyfish gene, uh, genes have a uh, tendency to grow in the dark in the deep ocean. So we can get those genes and we could transfer to check our cells in the dark, like which organelles are present in where. Or we can also glue our fishes. We can also make our, you know, spiders. We can get the spiders and get their silk, uh, silk web. And we can incorporate that into the yeast for the largest production. So genes will be the same uh, from the different organisms. Uh, but the function remains the same. So one video about that, very nicely done. These may look like ordinary fish. What you can't see is that they have a gene in them that codes for green fluorescent protein. But shine a blue light on it and GFP emits a bright green glow. What might surprise you is that the gene for GFP came from a jellyfish. GFP was first discovered in jellyfish over 50 years ago. Since then, scientists have been using it to study all kinds of biological processes. What's amazing is that this gene from jellyfish can be put into just about any living thing. Animals, fungi, plants, bacteria. They can read the DNA code of a gene and build GFP that is identical to the jellyfish protein. That same concept applies to tons of other genes too. The gene that spiders use to make silk webs, for example, can be put into yeast cells. Harvest the silk protein that the yeast cells make, and you've got the raw material to make a strong, lightweight fiber. In fact, a company is using this approach to bring yeast-grown spider silk fabrics to market. How is it then that fish and yeast can read DNA from a completely different organism? It's because, despite their differences, there's something fundamentally the same about how all living things read genes to build proteins. Good. The last one. So that I wanted to do show you on the first day of lecture, but sorry, I forgot that to initiate our lecture. But this uh, has created a nice story now for us to continue uh, to take it further. So proteins, they are the polypeptides. They are made up of amino acids uh, arranged in a linear chain folded into globular form. And the sequence of amino acids in a protein is defined by the sequence of a gene, which is encoded in the genetic code. And they are quite like 20 uh, types of amino acids, 20 set standards. Um, then this is your protein, we can see lysine, valine, phenylalanine, glycine, arginine, cysteine, glucine and we wanted to make a, you know, this is the quaternary structure of that protein here what we are seeing and these cysteine cysteines they are making disulfide bridges and on the other hand you have a carboxyl group at the end and beyond that, yeah, so at the end we are having these uh, very nice chain of uh, polypeptide chains. And, and these ones together, we can find these, these protein uh, in actually in our day-to-day -day dietary food. 
like peanuts, chickpea, fish, kidney beans, pulses, eggs, red meat, chicken breast. So all are the pure sources of, of protein if somebody is in, in uh, making a healthy choice. Then what are the basic players in molecular biology they are playing? That is your DNA, RNA and protein. Whereas your DNA uh, is replicating itself and further with the help of transcription RNA is made then after the translation of RNA your proteins are made and together this mechanism is known as your central dogma of life but remember it could never happen that that DNA is making your protein directly so this is not possible or your protein is making DNA like this so this is not possible so remember this mechanism will remain always like this yeah but RNA could self replicate a DNA replication RNA replication could happen and RNA could also go reverse in the with the help of reverse transcription could make a complementary DNA yeah but uh, not other way around and uh, RNA could go back DNA could make RNA RNA could go protein but protein from DNA to protein is not possible or from protein to DNA is not possible but RNA could replicate itself and from RNA to complementary DNA is still possible with the help of reverse transcription. So DNA replication now it's a basis for the biological inheritance. It's a fundamental process occurring in all, all living organisms to copy their DNA and it's a process of replication in which each standard of the original double standard DNA molecules serve as a template for the production of the complementary strand and two identical DNA molecules have been produced from the single standard DNA molecules in that case. So here we can see how uh, your DNA replication is done. So this is you have a double yeah, DNA double helix structure. First the topo isomerase will come it will unwind the structure and make it like parallel. Then comes your helicase enzyme. The helicase enzyme will unwind this structure, make two chains of your DNA. The one which is, it will make the leading strand and another one named will be as lagging strand. The leading strand will be going continuously smoothly uh, with the parallel uh, structures, parallel nucleotides corresponding to the uh, old, DNA, old DNA with the help of DNA polymerase lambda delta sorry and on the other side uh, yeah sorry after the helicase first thing is a single standard uh, binding proteins will come in order to function your RNA primase so they will come and attach there and then with the help of DNA primase and RNA primase your complementary strands will be produced and sometimes in the lagging strand uh, the DNA polymerase will not make whole uh, uh, like strands there will be some breakage and this broken part will be called as the Okazaki fragments and they could be healed with the help of DNA ligase so they could be joined with the help of your DNA ligase so all these enzymes play a quite important role in your um, DNA replication and together uh, this is known as your DNA replication so now let's uh, go to the next part that is um, yeah. That's we have done. Then transcription, that is a transcription is a method in which your RNA is produced. It could also go reverse transcription could happen making from your RNA to DNA. So during transcription your DNA sequence is read by RNA polymerase which produces complementary anti-parallel RNA strand. And also in this case it includes uracil instead of thymine. So transcription process, uh, if we see uh, how it's it's happening, is basically uh, it's a stretch of DNA is transcribed into RNA molecule is called transcription, and it encodes at least one gene in them. And if the gene transcribed encodes for a protein, the results of transcription is messenger RNA. And this messenger RNA will be used to create protein yeah, via process of translation. So, but a DNA transcription unit is also there for encoding the protein. 
and regulatory sequences that direct regulate the synthesis of that protein. So here we can see uh, DNA is read uh, from 3 prime to 5 prime, prime end during a transcription. So all your DNA uh, is unwind and then your RNA polymerase will come and the reading frame would be from 3 prime end to 5 prime, prime end. And the complementary RNA that is being produced in this case will be from 5 prime to 3 prime direction. So this, this question comes sometimes to confuse you in the MCQs. So take care of that. So only one of the two DNA standards uh, called template strand is used for transcription because RNA is on, only single standard. And the other DNA is called as the coding strand. So this is how your uh, messenger RNA CAU transcript of start signals hairpin loop uh, is made. So also during the RNA synthesis your introns are removed so your actually your gene is made up of exons and introns. Exons are the part which are not uh, coding uh, which are coding sorry and the introns are the one not. So in the transcription during the RNA synthesis what will happen uh, from the nuclear RNA, RNA will spliced in that splicing uh, to have your messenger RNA at the end your all um, introns will be removed at the end you will have your RNA synthesis and, and yeah at the end you have your messenger RNA and this whole process is known as your RNA synthesis and processing. And further the reverse transcription uh, it's a process in which like for, for example HIV RNA could make HIV DNA in the presence of enzyme reverse transcriptase uh, within the, your cell or cytoplasm. So reverse transcribing viruses replicate the genome by reverse transcribing DNA copies from the RNA and these copies are then transcribed to new RNA further. So retro transposons are also spread by copying DNA and RNA from one another. So just a second. So as I discussed this central dogma I was discussing before that this in the general case DNA could self replicate and then produce RNA and then produ produce protein. So the blue line says it's showing all the general cases of your central dogma that is but there could be also special case in which RNA could self replicate and also could go back to the DNA in the, with the help of reverse transcriptase like we have discussed in the viruses. So in total what we can see is that um, so the red ones are the special case and the blue ones are the general case and there could be uh, unofficial case so like from protein to go in DNA this is not possible or from DNA to protein coming up uh, this is not possible so no no so next step is translation which is a stage of biophotoprotein biosynthesis in which your mRNA produced by transcription is decoded by the ribosome to produce specific amino acid chains uh, which produce specific amino acid chains are uh, then that later fold into your active protein. So this translation does not happen in the nucleus this happens outside the nucleus that is your cytoplasm where the large and the small subunit of your ribosome they come together and they bind to the messenger RNA. So like this in this uh, very nice picture uh, what we can see your ribosomes came up and further your tRNA like it started from the methionine that is your start codon 
it started to uh, get attached to the tRNA and it will find the start codon on the messenger RNA also corresponding to it. And they will have these anticodons, uh, they will recognize them and they start to translate one by one. So one TNA will come, tRNA, then next will come, then third will come. So it will be three step method that is your initiation, elongation and then termination. So bringing all these three things together, uh, your translation, even a transcription process is also going on the same way. Initiation, elongation and transcription or termination. So these are the various gen genetic codes, how you code them if you want to remember forever. So it's, it's very simple, just on the left hand side for the first letter, you write UCAG. For the second base, you write on the top UCAG. On the right hand side, you write four letters, UCAG four times. So you will uh, make a 16 box uh, checker box here. In this checker box, what you can do is, you can take the first letter from here, second letter from the here, and third letter from the first line from here. So it will be U, 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 U. Then U, U, C. It's very easy and funny, U, U, A. U, U, G. So like this, you can create in each uh, box, four types of amino acids and they correspond to specific names according to their function and structure. Uh, that is serine, proline, theronine, alanine, valine, leucine. So remember, first of all, to remember them, you can start one with the four boxes, the four amino acids corresponding to one amino acids. Then uh, you can go start with the, actually from the methanine start codone, that is your AOG. The, the way to learn it, then you go for the stop codons, that is three codons are here, UAA, UAG, UGA. And then cysteine, arginine, then start making these uh, small boxes, histidine, glutamine, aspergine, lysine, aspartic acid, glutamic acid. So total they are around 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, uh, 20, 20 or more, more or less uh, amino acids. So we are done about now the basics of your DNA, RNA, proteins, transcription, translation, central dogma, same gene, different organisms, plants, oh sorry, um, yeah, basics of your molecular biology now gets a bit advanced, that is your genome. Actually, your genome is such a big, it was found out in the 2003 in the Human Genome Project. Now, afterwards, to find out the, uh, you know, the, the diagnostic of diseases is, is quite simple because we could alter the DNA of human beings and find the things also for better cure for the human beings. So, in that sense, uh, human medicine has been playing quite essential role. So, genome is an entirety of an organism hereditary information. It is encoded either in DNA or for many types of viruses in RNA. The genome includes both the genes and non-coding sequence of the DNA in them. So around mainly less than 2% of your total genome is actually uh, coding for the proteins. So all the genes, uh, less than 2% actually in our human body is actually coding for the protein and the rest uh, we still don't know what is the use of it. So if we see the comparative genomic sizes of organisms here, that is uh, Homo sapiens, uh, mouse, fruit fly, plant, yeast, bacteria. So the bacterias of your E. coli and, and uh, uh, H. influenzae, Haemophilus influenzae, the chromosome number is only one, but the size is around 4.6 million to 1.8 million. Yeah, but the chromosome has only one in them. But as we, if we compare, a human and mouse, so they are almost similar 46 and 40 and the size base pair is also as comparable as the chromosomes are less 3.2 to 2.6. So that's why we use mouse as a as for the human model as a mouse model uh, in order to find out the various experiments in order to find out the diagnostic of various diseases uh, because it's, it's similar to the human. Then comes for the study of genetics, even though the chromosome number is 8, but it has 137 million uh, size-based pairs and it's quite also similar to the humans. So if, if somebody is want to study genetics, so they use this uh, fruit fly as a model, very good model. 
then from the uh, plant perspective uh, like in the case we use human but in the case of plants we go for Arabidopsis thaliana, thaliana this is the model plant that we use for the experiments at very large scale if somebody want to do any big uh, want to do plant breeding or find out to some genes to, in order to uh, find out a very good species of oil or um, rapeseed oil or rice golden rice like that so first you do the research on the Arabidopsis thaliana then comes your C. elegans, uh, which is of chromosome number 12, also being then the yeast. You know, these C. elegans and yeast, many Nobel Prize winners have worked on them. Though they are very uh, tedious to work on them, and it's very difficult to interpret the data towards the human beings. Uh, most people work on the mouse for that reason. But uh, those people who are successful, I met some of them. Uh, during my, you know, um, during my meetings in Italy, I was for a conference. So I met a Nobel laureate who, uh, she was done with her professorship. So she was emeritus. You know, when you are done with the professorship, you become a emeritus. So you are not anymore working in there, but you are helping others uh, department in working because you know, you are working your whole life, creating a lot of papers, bringing out new research, review articles, guiding PhD students, guiding master's students. Um, so your body, your brain, by the end of 70 or 80 years, it's though you don't have that much uh, tendency to work that much, but your brain is still working that way. And uh, so that's why the people who are emeritus, they still do come to the conferences. And, and doing the noble cause, helping all the scientists, all the searches for free of, uh, yeah. Uh, it, it was, I was quite emotional because I was having just my normal lunch in the afternoon and they, they just came over and I was just having my, my turban and sitting there alone. I didn't make so many friends, but they just came by and sit around me. And it feels very like they had few words about my research and they told how their life was in the USA. So all these things. Um, so you never know. You will be meeting one of the top scientists in your futures. Um, or you will be the one of the top scientists in the futures in the field of biotechnology. Uh, those who had a, like, like some, some of might having a dream of becoming a doctor. But you might be helping millions of people. Um, instead of helping the patients, but helping millions of patients in order to find a cure to the diseases, in order to find something uh, that will be known to the world. So that's, that's the thing. Though you, we all have some weaknesses, I have some weaknesses, you might have some weaknesses, we all know our weaknesses, but this is our life to overcome them, to fight over them and be the best of our version. Be the best of our version. That's, that should be our goal. So this comparative genomic, uh, the, 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 this, this um, what you say, this slide that we are seeing uh, in it itself uh, containing so much information here that I can speak for like maybe one or two hours, but this will take a lot of time. So I should continue with my lecture. So why should we do genome analysis? So we should do genome analysis in order to predict some genes uh, which are uncharacterized sequences and in order to obtain the complete sequence of as many as genomes possible and yeah this genome analysis also helps to develop bt cotton bt brinjal uh, many other things but there i want to i have recently written one book chapter into the food uh, recent trends in the food production so i was asked to uh, talk about um GM foods, GM foods, yeah. So I wrote quite in my first part, uh, wrote quite essential benefits, but somehow I, I can't stop myself to be negative about it. Um, because there, there were so much stuff uh, being negative written from flavor, flavor varieties to BT cotton, um, many, uh, yeah. So people were having a lot of tr uh, troubles in the future after having these transgenic either rap soil it's in japan or in usa or in china or in india people who are absorbing these genetically modified food by the some time after few years um 
it's not published so i cannot show you the data at the moment but uh, yeah it's, it's it's horrible actually it's very horrible uh, results that are coming some pregnant women uh, are getting affected after eating these um, gm foods so this is not i'm just like giving um, some raw data here i am saying the published data from the government so all things that are coming at the moment so we might be getting mutated actually maybe it's done to do some mutations in ourselves uh, or we can be a kind of a robots for some some company because if we eat their grains they can control us they might put some chips in it i don't know so anything is possible so let's talk about it, the the real business here uh, tools in molecular biology so first uh, this gel electrophoresis we will continue in the later lectures we will go in very detail about them but we can touch a little bit um, about them here today also that is a gel electrophoresis uh, this is the basic principle in that dna rna and proteins can be separated by means of an electric field in agrose gel electrophoresis dna and rna can be separated on the basis of size by running the dna through agrose gel and proteins can be separated on the basis of size by using an SDS page gels or on the base of size and their electric charge. That is known as your 2D gel electrophoresis. And poly, yeah, this I want to show you uh, maybe today uh, how we do this in virtual lab. Polymerase chain reaction, you might have learned this in your first semester, uh, which is extremely versatile technique for copying DNA. So we allow single DNA sequence to be copied and alter in predetermined ways. So PCR has many variations like uh, RT-PCR for amplifications of RNA, real-time PCR, qPCR, which allow for quantitative measurement of DNA or RNA molecules. So PCR analysis. So we know that in the PCR normal analysis, the first uh, step after adding your sample into the thermal cycler uh, you are having the uh, first cycle of DAE. Remember this uh, short term DAE. D is for denaturating, e, A for annealing, E for um, elongation. Yeah. First denatured, they got separated, then they got annealed with the primer, then they got elongated. So each has a different uh, corresponding temperature. We will discuss about them in soon later. And then the after the first cycle, you have uh, 2 to 2 raised to our copies that is 4 then 8 16 32 and by the 35th cycle you have around 68 billion copies which is huge which is huge yeah so that's how exponentially your pcr amplification is done so the primers that are using in the strand uh, the nucleic acids that show serve as a starting point for dna synthesis and these primers are usually short chemically synthesized oligonucleotides with a length of about 20 bases and they are hybridized uh, to target DNA which is then copied by the polymerase. And the minimum uh, primer length that we used in the most application is around 18 nucleotides and the replication starts at the 3 prime end of the primer and copies at the and copies the opposite strand. So in most cases of natural DNA replication, the primer for DNA synthesis and replication is a short strand of RNA. So the applications of PCR, the common applications of PCR is a study of patterns of gene expression. The task of DNA sequence can also be assisted by PCR and PCR's, uh, PCR has a numerous applications to the more traditional process of DNA cloning. An existing application of PCR is the phylogenetic analysis of DNA from Asian sources and PCR can also be used in parental testing where individual is matched with their close relatives. So I will continue with PCR only here. Oopsie doopsie. Some lectures from my college so I have discussed the short history of this PCR it's in 1983 it was discovered by Dr. Carrie Mullis remember his name quite coming up in the exam 
and then the first publication of PCR was done by CETUS <coughs> Corporation. And then purified talc polymerase is the first used in the PCR and this in 18, uh, 1988 Perkin Elmer introduces the automated thermal cycler and then the talc polymerase in the 1989 is known to be the molecular of the year at that time. So we have discussed so I just want to show you these three diagrams here that is denaturation that is temperature is around 92 degrees Celsius to 94 and there is a double stranded DNA which melts to single stranded DNA uh, by 92 degrees Celsius. And then annealing which temperature is around 50 to 70 degrees Celsius primers bind to the complementary sequence with the forward and reverse primer. Then the extension is done with 72 degrees Celsius from time of 0 0.5 to 3 minutes uh, so that you have multiple copies then at then you have product like this. So within this in the first copy you have this much of DNA but after PCR you have millions of copies. And in the chemical comp components we need MgCl2 buffer, DNTPs, primers, DNA polymerase and target DNA. So some requirements, so DNA sequence of target uh, region must be known. The primers should be like of 20 to 30 base pairs and thermostable DNA polymerase we have to use like TAC polymerase which is not inactivated by 95 degrees Celsius and DNA thermocycler needed to make it heating and cooling cycles some applications, molecular sequencing and genetic engineering. This is the instrumentation, the thermocycler, this is 4-in-1 thermocycler, this is the uh, advanced one, this is the most oldest one. But most likely in the lab we use this one. I use this for almost one year, every day. I was even talking to this instrument. How are you instrument? How was the day? Give me the results. Because you can't get the results, so you start talking to your instruments, this happens. Um, so <laughs> that was a funny part. So let's watch one um, nice video about PCR here. Mm, also share you my PCR presentation with you mm, PCR and we saw now PCR video Beginning this protocol, students must fill out the worksheet provided on the last page of this document. This will allow students to calculate the appropriate volume of reagents to mix in the creation of a master cocktail. The purpose of a cocktail is to mix all the common reagents in a multi-sample procedure to avoid excess pipetting and potential errors. In this example of protocol 2A, Four students are amplifying the actinin-3 gene from all four of their DNA samples. This information is filled out on the left-hand side of the worksheet. On the right-hand side, students use the equations to determine the number of tubes needed and the multiplier for reagent volumes. In addition to the four DNA samples, a negative control sample is always included. Therefore, five tubes are needed for the PCR reaction. In the creation of the cocktail, pipetting error is accounted for by adding another sample. Therefore, the multiplier for this group is six. Each row of table one represents a common reagent used in all the samples undergoing a PCR reaction. The multiplier is filled out in all rows of the multiplier column of table 1. Moving across each row, the volume indicated per reaction is multiplied by the multiplier.
12.5 times 6 equals 75 microliters of red tack added to the cocktail. 11.5 times 6 equals 69 microliters of water added to the cocktail. 0 0.5 times 6 equals 3 microliters of each of the forward and reverse primer added to the cocktail. Finally, the sum of these volumes should be equal to the product of the final row. 75 plus 69 plus 3 plus 3 equals 150 microliters of total volume in the cocktail. This amount matches 25 times 6. Table 2 is used as a guide for labeling of the PCR samples. As indicated by the equations, this group will be using 5 tubes. The class must collectively number the PCR samples to not confuse samples amongst the groups. In this example, these students have been assigned samples numbered 5 through 9. The sample names are filled out in the second column and the primers used for each sample are filled out in the last two columns. In this example, the forward primer is actinin 3F and the reverse primer is actinin 3R. The same primers are used for all samples. The common reagents provided are molecular biology water, a forward primer, which you should be sure to check for the marking of PCR, to ensure that you are using the appropriate concentration. A reverse primer. And red tack ready mix. The red tack will need to be thawed prior to use, but once thawed, keep the solution on ice to prevent enzyme degradation. Next, prepare the cocktail by using the volumes and reagents indicated on the worksheet. Obtain a new tube and label it as the cocktail. When creating a cocktail, it is best to start with the largest volumes. Though red tack is the largest volume, the solution should be kept on ice as long as possible so instead the water is added first. When adding each of the reagents, be sure to use the appropriate micropipetter for the volume being added. Next, the primers are added. It is best to pipette small volumes directly into larger volumes to avoid loss of the reagent.
Finally, add the red tack and immediately return the stock to ice. Mix the solution and centrifuge all cocktail tubes created by all groups in the class together. Press and hold the short button to do a brief spin. The collected cocktail solution will be split amongst the five tubes in this example. PCR tubes are provided in strips of four, so if you need five tubes, use two strips of tubes. In this case, to amplify actinin-3, 24 microliters of cocktail solution is added to each of the five tubes. Before adding DNA to the PCR reactions, make sure that the tubes are labeled. Make sure all DNA samples are mixed before transferring the solution.
one microliter is a very small volume, but you should still be able to see a drop in the tip. Put the tip all the way into the bottom of the tube and pump up and down on the plunger before expelling to the second stop. This helps to ensure that the one microliter of DNA has been expelled into the reaction. Cap the tubes tightly and flick to mix the samples. Use the mini micro centrifuge with the eight tube strip head to collect the solution at the bottom of the tube. It is good practice to always mix and collect solutions before every step especially if the solutions have been sitting for a while. Turn the thermocycler on with the switch in the back. Place the tubes in the thermocycler by pressing the metal latch and lifting up on the lid. Tubes can be placed in any spot or orientation. Close the lid and make sure the metal latch has clicked into place. Heat cycling programs have already been programmed into the thermocycler, so all you need to do is run them by pressing the proceed button. Use the horizontal arrows to navigate to the program of interest, in this case ACTN to amplify the actinin-3 locus, and hit proceed. The heated lid should be enabled by hitting proceed to prevent extreme condensation at the top of the tube. The thermocycler will ramp to the initial temperature and begin timing the incubation. It is good practice to make sure the machine reaches this step with no errors. After it has initiated properly, the machine can be left while the reaction proceeds for several hours. Once the run is complete, the cycler can be turned off by simply flipping the switch in the back of the machine. So that's the end of the session, students, for today. It went a bit longer. Okay then, take care. We we'll see us tomorrow. Stay safe. So we we'll see us tomorrow, same time, same place, and continue our classes. Oh, there are some questions. Sorry, I forgot them. Yeah, you can watch them later. Oh, there is cyclone. Sorry to hear that. Hope everything is fine. Yeah, you are right, Pallavi Gaurav. Uh, SGS page we will do in detail, Krishna Kumar. It's a uh, special lecture we will do. I don't know, because the companies are quite big. Yeah, companies are quite big. Um, and it's very, yeah, what shall I say? 
it's a it's a multi billion companies who are paying to us uh, like to the government to let us eat uh, this transgenic crops so for their profit so they will be coming in the market so we can't help it out hey okay. rna primer and dna primer they are both different things bachche um used that but that's a smart question though why rna primer is used in our body for replication we also use dna polymerase yeah rna primer primer is required for the primers for the replication but in this uh, pcr we are not doing replications we are just uh, making our long chain of our yeah along for the elongation we need dna primer uh, we can't use rna primer in that uh, for sure if i'm using rna as my source of material then i will be using rna primer but for that's another case for the dna replication um rna primer has its own role but uh, dna primer will be not playing any role there so both are different cases we cannot uh, like intermix them actually to be honest yeah so students uh, thank you very much if you have no further questions if you have any further questions you can ask okay then take care bye bye i hope you enjoyed this lecture we we'll see us tomorrow and continue with um some techniques maybe we we'll do the dna solution tomorrow and then continue further for your what is this um cell cell culture cell culture techniques and microscope we we'll start with the microscope tomorrow okay bye bye so now um once we are done tomorrow then you can initiate your assignment making so once we are done with the day one stuff then we can start okay bye